Woo. While I love riding my local trails with friends, what really realigns my compass, whether it's backpacking or mountain biking, is to explore a new remote trail. For a couple hours or even days, I can disconnect from the modern world and reconnect with the real world. It's not about speed or even distance. Whether it's a sweet downhill or a view I read about on trail forks that brought me here, it's all about time. Being safe while solo and off-grid takes just a little preparation and planning, as well as dialing back your riding to protect your body and equipment from damage. Here's what I do to try to make these adventures safe. First, let's talk about what I bring on every single ride, no matter how short. I'll always bring at least this Dekine five liter hot laps because it gives me a convenient way to bring this tool roll that I made, which has all the stuff that I might need for most repairs on the trail. It gives me enough space inside for a toilet paper pack and some snacks of some kind and a place to keep my phone. Um, speaking of which, I always bring my phone and I'll always bring some water. In addition to this, I will always have on my bike, so I don't forget it, uh, an elastic strap with a uh, tube and tire levers. So what's the difference between that ride and a solo remote ride? And it basically comes down to the higher consequences for having bike issues, uh, body issues, or navigation, or getting lost issues. Now let's start with the bike. The first thing that I do is I'll do a little more than normal thorough uh, pre-ride check. And I'll probably go ahead and, and air up the tires with just a few more PSI because I'm still only bringing one extra tube. I'll also probably ride at a little bit less of an aggressive pace just because I really don't wanna break something out on the trail 10 miles from my truck uh, that I can't fix. So if I'm going on a long remote ride, I will bring this. It is just a, I think I paid 30 bucks for this uh, Quest pack at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. And I like it because it's, it's cheap, it's light, and it holds a three liter bladder and tons of room for all the extra stuff that I wanna bring without feeling like it's overloaded. What I do is I'll just transfer that same tool roll from my hip pack into there, as well as my toilet paper roll. So those are always the same. That covers the bike issues. Now let's talk about body issues of injury prevention and dealing with uh, hydration and food issues. So for hydration, like I said, um, I've got a lot more water that I can carry on this. And I will research ahead of time and I'll know for a fact whether I'm gonna be doing stream crossings or if there's access to water. If there is, I'll pack less water so I'm not carrying it and I will bring a Sawyer mini filter along. And this is a, a squeeze uh, bladder that I can use to collect water, attach uh, this filter to it, and then just basically squeeze it into the bladder or a water bottle for essentially unlimited water. As far as food, because I've got more space, I will end up bringing more calories. So I'll bring a handful of gels uh, as my backup, and I'll always throw in you know, a big bag of trail mix, candy bars, maybe a, a sandwich or something like that. Um, I've also got, um, some salt capsules so that if um, I'm starting to cramp up, um, I can pop a couple of these uh, along with the sodium that's in a lot of these gels and hopefully keep the cramps at bay until I can get back uh, to the trailhead. Also to protect my body, I will always wear 
my full face helmet. I'll also, I may not wear the gloves the whole time, but I'll bring the gloves uh, in case it gets cold. I also always wear knee pads. So I've got uh, G-form knee pads, which are pretty lightweight. You can wear them all day long, but they really do protect uh, if you go down unexpectedly. I also will bring for uh, exposure protection, I'll bring a light layer. And this is a very light uh, merino wool layer that um, I got from Amazon. It's made by uh, Minus 33. It is really lightweight, but it keeps you amazingly warm. And even if it gets wet, it'll keep you warm. I'll also bring uh, a buff, which if you've ever had one, you know it's got a million uses. Uh, you can wear it as a neck gaiter when it's cold. You could even fashion it into a, um, a hat. You could even make a balaclava out of this. And in case I get hurt, I have a very, very small uh, boo-boo pack that I, that I steal from my uh, pack for my uh, hiking. And it's, it's very minimal, but I have some uh, iodine, cotton balls, Q-tips, super glue, and uh, band-aids. I've got some Imodium, I've got ibuprofen, I've got chapstick, nail clippers, a tick puller, um, I think that's pretty much it. So, how do we avoid getting lost? I will use a uh, Wahoo Element Bolt. Uh, and this is just a very, very small bike computer that allows uh, me to go into Strava and download a route. So I've logged into Strava. I get a lot of my ideas from people that I follow and I will take their route and just download it or I'll modify it slightly. Uh, here is a look at my feed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down, uh, pick a ride, uh, we'll pick this one. And you can click on it, whether it's your ride or somebody else's, and you'll see this create route. So if you just click on that, it'll bring the route up and you can, you can just save it now or if you wanna modify it, say you wanna uh, extend this loop down, pull a point down and it'll change it. Uh, at that point, you can just hit save, give it a name, click it as mountain bike, then save it to your routes. If you wanna create your own route, then go to explore and create route. Then you just have to scroll to wherever you wanna find that trail. Zoom in on it. And I wanna create a route that goes from this trailhead and climbs up Bull Mountain and then back to the trailhead. So all you have to do is click on your start. Then just add points and it will begin to create your route. So now you can look at this and see I've created an 11 mile loop with 1500 feet of climbing. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm gonna call it. Bull Mountain Climb Clockwise Mountain Bike. And then you just save it to your roots. Now, since I'm gonna use my uh, Wahoo Element Bolt to track the ride. Uh, you need to go to your Element app on your phone, go to Profile, click on Authorized Apps, and make sure that Strava is checked on. Now we can go to Workout, choose a route, scroll down, and it's automatically synced. There's that route we just created. I can select it. And now it's already 
linked up to the element, and all I got to do now is hit start, and I'll start getting uh, turn by turn uh, information on the ride. Anytime that I'm going to be going uh, on a long ride, I will bring a set of lights. So I'll bring uh, one light which goes easily on uh, the top of my helmet. And this is a Knight Rider, the Lumina 850, which is super nice. And I will have the Knight Rider Lumina 1100 Boost uh, mounted on the bar. So these are uh, crazy bright. Batteries last for quite a long time. And it will definitely get, get you back to the, to the trailhead in case you inadvertently end up uh, riding at night. Another thing that really comes in handy, and I started using this uh, about two years ago, because I also do um, some solo remote backpacking. And my wife uh, didn't like the fact that I was gonna be pretty much out of touch for maybe a day or two. So this is a Garmin InReach Mini. And if you don't know, this is allowing you through, like mine's a $12 subscription, two-way communication with um, anybody who's in your contact list. So you can uh, use your phone to connect with the uh, device through Bluetooth. You have an EarthMate app on your phone where you can pretty much type messages just like you would text to somebody, and then it connects through your device and gets sent out via satellite. So it is great just to be able to have uh, updates with your family when you're gone, uh, just benign. You could say, hey, I'm starting my trip. Uh, everything's fine. I'm done for the night. I'm back to the trailhead. But the biggest peace of mind is it has uh, an SOS feature right here. And when you activate this, it sends a message to search and rescue that you need help. The nice thing is they will send you a text back to ask you, do you really need us to come out there with a helicopter and find you? And if you did it by accident, you say, oh no, I'm sorry, yeah, everything's fine. Or if you don't answer them back, they're coming. This is the ultimate peace of mind when you're out of touch, you're out of cell range, uh, you're by yourself, something really bad happens. This alone is by far the most important equipment that I make sure I have if I'm gonna be uh, in a remote location by myself. One other thing, because a lot of these devices are battery powered, I try my best to charge them before I go, but sometimes you forget. I also bring a portable uh, battery pack. I think this one's about 10,000 milliamp hours, which is enough to charge a phone at least twice and to keep all these devices charged up at least to get me back home. Another thing that I bring, which I really hope I don't need to use, is kind of a emergency space blanket, fire starter with some bug wipes and uh, a couple lighters. So is this crazy? Is this completely overkill? I don't know. As I mentioned, for me, the act of at least feeling like I'm completely secluded and completely alone in nature out of touch from civilization is, is half of the goal of getting out there to begin with. This is what I feel gives me the peace of mind without bringing the kitchen sink along with me. Is there anything that you think I should bring that I didn't bring? Let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're like me and refuse to act your age, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.